It's a problem rife in our big cities. Gangs violently protecting their turf as they deal drugs, smuggle weapons, and initiate new members, many of them children. Some of the most notorious ganglands lie in the Eastern Cape's northern areas on the outskirts of Kabecha. But as the screws tighten on their activities in the city, they've expanded their operations. And the sleepy town of Dispatch has felt the impact. They prowl in the dead of night. Two or three masked men picking out the quiet streets dodging lights, dogs, private security, until they manage to creep or shoot their way inside. Hitting soft targets. Help us, please, help, help, help us, please. But armed and dangerous. The streets of dispatch tell a disturbing story. Until recently, there were few high walls or high-tech security here. It was a sleepy suburban town on Nelson Mandela Bay's rural fringes when Reino Mateson grew up here. Hey, Reino. And so last year, he bought a house with his girlfriend close to his parents' home. Within months, they were hit twice. I just shouted at them, they didn't even see me, and they only shot at me. I mean, it's like it's nothing, and life's worth nothing anymore. I grabbed a knife that I had next to me. My hunting rifle was still in the safe, trying to protect myself if they came through the gate. So when I shouted at them again, and then he just fired another shot at me. What Reno thought was perfectly adequate security with the open felt across the road he now stepped up a notch. My girlfriend is taking it quite badly. From one o'clock till three to four in the morning, she doesn't sleep. My duty electric fencing also bought cameras. There's nothing else we can do. Across the suburb, the safety Daryl Opperman had always taken for granted was shattered last June with two home invasions, two nights in a row. Robbers pistol whipped her husband looking for electronics. How is your husband doing now? I think we're doing better. So last night I woke up and one of the things other people said they heard is they hear them whistling. That's the way they communicate, they whistle. It sounds like this community is on edge. Yes. You don't want to look through the windows that they can see you if they are out there. My dog start barking so there is something there. By now, like many in dispatch, the Oppermans have installed an alarm system with armed response. So you're sitting there with the panic button waiting. And this is what the area's CCTV cameras and private security companies are capturing. Night after night after night. The bay's beautiful ocean does little to ease the tension that's palpable under the surface. If you had to take a look at this, you'd swear that this is one of the best cities in South Africa. This is made for tourism. Instead, Nelson Mandela Bay is infested with gangs. And unlike Cape Town, the gangs aren't isolated to one area. The local Herald newspaper's headlines have tracked the spread of house robberies from the inner city to the outskirts. The latest spike coinciding with the easing of COVID-19 lockdowns and their brutal financial impact on the city. Rian Mare is a senior reporter. So how did it start? So we initially had a group that sort of earned the name the Balaclava Gang. They were between two and four guys hitting all the properties around the outskirts of the city. But these guys were known for always wearing masks. The other one known to be one of the quite violent gangs is the Panga Gang, because they use Pangas during the commission of their crimes. Another one has earned the name of the Quantum Gang, because there seems to be, whenever these incidents happen, there's a Toyota Quantum minibus in the area, seemingly picking these guys up once they've committed these crimes. 
Rian, that sounds incredibly scary. The names already strike fear into, into me. Look, these guys feed on that kind of fear. They feed on these uh, reputations that they've built. Robberies happen all the time across the country, but what is it about these robberies that sets them apart from what we've seen before? I think it's the frequency with which they happen. It's not like, oh, you hear about it and then two, three weeks later it happens again. These are like once or twice a week, you know, some of them hitting three times a week, you know, in the same area. A decade ago, the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime said there were two main gangs with 33 affiliates at work in the Bay. On every criminal enterprise, from drug trafficking to extortion to firearms to robberies. In a northern suburb notorious for gangsterism, we asked to meet Julian Julies, a former general with the prison gang who claims to have turned his life around. Julian says the robbery gangs are not working for themselves. They get recruited innocently in getting involved because there is a, a syndicate operating in the city. There's an inner circle and an outer circle. Now the inner circle is where the syndicate operations are taking place, where the money is speaking. And when the outer circle is the ones who are selling the drugs, those who contribute and move drugs from city to city, and those who put them on drugs, they exchange the goods for drugs. And does that also include home invasions? Yes, it includes home invasions, house robberies. But now we're talking right. about dispatch. Why is it happening there? There is certainly somebody who informed them who's part of stuff, who actually shared with them some information where there's police visibility or how many vehicles are dispatched. So which means they will know we will have 30 minutes to do the job here. It's just because of police visibility? That there's a lack of vehicles, police visibility, and in that certain prison. So I, I, I don't know what's wrong with the management of the police. The Bay's police crime stats are out of control. Last year, it had 80 murders per 100,000 people, above the national average. Over the recent holidays, additional police officers were deployed. With limited vehicles and officers at his disposal, District Commissioner Major General V.C. Lenata adjusted SAP's members' shifts to work at night. So we have uh, taken everyone that are doing even administration work to go there and work because they are all police officials because we are really under pressure and uh, what the community is uh, going through is not something that we want and uh, of course as a district commissioner I have a responsibility to ensure that dispatch is safe. The border of the policing precinct that dispatch forms part of has also expanded. There are other areas in the form of the informal settlements that were also added into the pressing of dispatch. That has made us also to stretch our resources because we must cover all areas. But it does not mean that it's a, it's a situation that you cannot overcome. It's taking too much time. How much pressure are you under right now? Too much. We're not sleeping. We're hard at work. And that is why myself, uh, I, I'm also involved in operations. Uh, yes, I also work the streets as well. What's needed is smart policing, intelligence-driven dismantling of the groups that purchase the goods from robberies and reduce murders during aggravated robberies. Julian recruited many of the youngsters he's now trying to save. How was it like, Young people like Jermaine, who feel that in this economy, it's easier to get into a gang than out of it.
Experts say the damage caused by the Bay's gangs has too long been underestimated. Late last year, an elderly resident was getting ready for a shift when two intruders entered his garden. With his wife in the kitchen, he charged at them with a toy sword. And I came with flashlight now to, to say if my career uh, stand or I shoot. Yet in the following moment to track an early sneller. Um charge him with the sword? Yeah, with so half a sword. I charge him on him off. And I'll have to do my swim bat. With the gun in the hand? With the gun in the hand. Pelting him with stones, pot plants, and a panga, they nearly cut off his ear. Who said, Um, what did they get? Net two cell phones. Had Amber Um his life cost? But they will kill you, man. As dispatch beefs up security, the community has never been more united. I don't like being a victim. So I'm not going to allow them to chase me out of my home. This is my home. This is where I want to stay. So what do you say for the people who have been here in the inbreak? OK, I'm going to ask for the people. Because you're just people who are doing what I'm doing. I'm not here with the TV. I don't mean it. Ik heb ze van die vijfde stop. Ik heb gehoord dat je gaat doen die stop. 